Morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Coffee, 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 coffee. I'm really excited for today's video because it's actually the introduction of another new series. Now, don't panic. Many of you will know that I tend to do sort of multiple long-standing different series at the same time because I love documenting my own journey through various aspects of language learning. And so it just so happens that now in Mandarin Chinese, where I've been documenting that journey as a whole for quite a long time now, well, I'm now at the place where I want to start using graded readers. And so this is the perfect opportunity to kick off a very large series about becoming able to read books in Mandarin Chinese, which I think is going to be an unbelievable journey. I cannot wait. I'm so excited to bring you along. And so this is the first episode in sort of part one of that very, probably quite a long series. And part one is all about graded readers. And so that's what we're gonna talk about today. I can hardly wait. One more sip of coffee and we'll kick off the episode. <sighs> So I love reading in general. I, I love just sitting down, holding a book. I could talk for hours about just the joy and the pleasure of reading. But I have to tell you, reading a book in a foreign language is one of the most special things to me. It is unbelievable. It is so magical. And I just, it's hard to even describe how wonderful it feels to just sort of dance across the page of a book that is written in a language and perhaps even a script that is so different than my native language and to just sort of transcend those barriers of not just space and time, but also culture and language and to be essentially communicating with that author, to be taking in a story for the first time in a new language. It is just, oh, it is absolute splendor. I. Oh, I just love it so much. In fact, I'll actually give you a quick example. Hang on. Okay, so this is a book from Marc Lévy called Mes Amis, Mes Amours. And this book in particular, I remember reading it and I would laugh like three or four times per page easily. And you know, some of those things are actually funny, but I guarantee you that half the things I laugh at in this book, they're actually probably not necessarily funny, or at least not they're, they're not laugh out loud funny to French people or French speaking people, but it's just, there's something about the way that stories are told, the way that things are expressed, the way that narrative feels in French. There's this sort of dry cynicism. There's this sarcasm. There's just something that is just so beautiful and I love it. And it, it just makes me laugh. I find it really funny, just the way that these stories are told. And this has happened to me with multiple books from Marc Lévy, but also David Fuenquinos. In fact, I'll grab one of those. Okay, this has gone terribly wrong. I went to go grab, oh God. <laughs> I went to grab one book and I've come back with like 15 books in about seven languages. I just, I can't, I just, oh, I was like going through my bookshelf. I was like, oh my God, I could tell them a story about this. I'm like, oh, this is a great example. So David Fuenquinos wrote this book called La Delicatesse, which is actually the first book that I ever read all the way through without needing a dictionary in French. By the way, I highly recommend that you check out my series about the joys of reading in a foreign language, which was actually one of my favorite series I ever did. It was quite some time ago, so the quality is not as good as my current videos, uh, but I basically used my own journey of learning to read my very first novel in Spanish as a narrative for just expressing how much I love reading in foreign languages. And I think episode two, is the one where I just pulled out loads of books from all kinds of different languages and I just told stories about why they're all so special to me. So I really recommend that video. But yeah, so this book was the first one I ever read in French without a dictionary. It was incredibly special and it happened to intersect with exactly when I moved to Paris. Now I lived in Paris very briefly because I ran out of money very quickly. It was my first like big move after graduating from college. I was like eight months working as a receptionist in the UK on like six pounds an hour. I was like, I'm gonna be stuck here forever. So I moved to Paris with a thousand pounds saved up and didn't last very long. But <laughs> those first two weeks in Paris, sitting 
in coffee shops and like just kind of like wandering around sitting on park benches that was the moment when i realized i can read this i don't need a dictionary and i just remember dying with laughter i was cracking up there's so many parts of this book the same thing and then you know god like this is another book from the same author david fuenquinos les souvenirs uh really great movie uh it's hilarious ah but then it's just like Reading a book in a language like Mandarin Chinese, where we have this idea of Chinese characters, it's just, it's so magical and mystical. And it's the same thing in Japanese. So many of you will know I learned Japanese for a long time. I have a lot of experience with Japanese and I loved reading in Japanese. And so, for example, this is a book that I've shown recently all about coffee. And it's just like when you look at the pages of a Japanese book and it's so magical and it's everything's from right to left and top to bottom. And you've got these like strings of just gorgeous Chinese characters mixed in with hiragana and katakana. And it, it just makes this, it's like a painting for me. I just, oh, and being able, like I said, to dance up and down across those pages and take in a narrative, take in a story, take in the jokes, the sad parts, you know, the tragic parts, the, the moments of triumph, all in a different language. I, it is just simply, it, it's, it's splendor. It's just, it's, it's indescribable and I love it. I really wish I could just tell you all about all these books, but I do need to get onto the actual meat of this episode, which is that I'll be using graded readers. Now, I've shown these before, but I actually have a whole set of graded readers in Mandarin Chinese. Actually, there's quite a few of them. And that's because I actually got them in both traditional and simplified Chinese characters. I'm focusing on traditional characters, as many of you will know already, but I, of course, also want to become very comfortable and proficient reading also in simplified characters. So I did get them in both versions. Um, but these are great. So these are from Mandarin Companion, and I basically have five at the level one and then three at level two. Level one consists of 300 individual characters. So all these stories, for example, this one is Emma from Jane Austen. Now, if you're not familiar with how graded readers work, I recommend going and checking out my video on different ways of reading in a foreign language. That was a really nice one. But essentially this whole story has been told with only using 300 different Chinese characters. And so the idea is that you're gonna be seeing the same characters over and over again, but you're gonna see them in different words, different contexts. And so the idea is to be able to read and take in an entire story, but one that has been greatly simplified, but also one that's very famous. And I've never read Emma by Jane Austen. So it's a chance for me to read, or at least, you know, get a taste for a classic story that's very famous, very well known, but I'm reading it for the first time and I'm reading it in a simplified way directly in Mandarin Chinese. And so, you know, right now, if I'm honest with you, it seems like it's gonna be super difficult, right? Because I've never experienced reading a book of any sort in Mandarin Chinese. I do know quite a lot of characters and especially because in Japanese, I actually, I was, I knew about 3000 characters in Japanese at the height of my learning. And in Japanese, you need about 2000, slightly more um, for the sort of recommended daily use. So I was well above the sort of literacy, like daily use level in Japanese. Um, definitely a lot rustier now than I used to be. And of course it is quite different in Mandarin, of course, because of the pronunciation of the characters and how they are read. But a lot of characters also do look different, even if it's subtly. And so I, you know, it, it feels a bit scary if I'm honest, but that's the beauty of learning languages with graded readers is that the reality is that I know from experience, there's only 300 characters in all of these five level one stories that I have. And these are great. I've got the Prince and the Pauper. I've got the Country of the Blind. I've got the Secret Garden. And even Sherlock Holmes and the Case of the Curly Haired Company. So yeah, I mean, that is, that's very exciting. You may think, okay, 300 characters, if we think about the several thousand that we need to read comfortably in everyday situations in Mandarin Chinese, you might think, that's not very much. But for me, this initial period of reading graded readers, well, first of all, the whole point is that they're graded and so you can get 
you know, perhaps level two, three, four, five, depending on what series you're using. And so they do get harder. So the idea is that it's progressively more difficult. But for me, this initial phase is more about getting lots of practice with reading and building my confidence. Because like I said, even though based on my own experience, I know that these are probably gonna be fine for me. I mean, even level two has 450 characters. We've got some really cool stories. We've got Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne, and then a two-part of Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. And yeah, probably they're gonna be fine, but I just, even now, even knowing that, it seems scary to me. And so yes, for me, this first phase of reading level one and two graded readers of Mandarin Companion, it's just mostly about building my confidence and getting comfortable and familiar with the sensation of reading a book in Mandarin. And of course, there's gonna be, I'd be very surprised if there weren't plenty of new words or plenty of different like character combinations I haven't seen before. It's gonna be a great way to strengthen and reinforce my knowledge of all the basic grammatical structures. I'm assuming these stories are gonna have a decent combination of narrative as well as dialogue, which is great because it's this idea of essentially reading a conversation. And yeah, that's really what it's mostly for. Now, Mandarin Companion, unfortunately, doesn't seem to have any other levels, so at this point, when I finish these books, then I'll have to reassess. I'll have to see, do I feel comfortable at this point just diving into something else, like perhaps real short stories in Mandarin, or maybe even essays in Japanese. I'll go grab that. I have this wonderful book and several like it called Read Real Japanese. And this particular one is all about essays. And so this is a collection of essays from contemporary popular authors, such as Haruki Murakami and good old Banana Yoshimoto. Actually, you know what? I think I have, yeah, I do. I have Kitchen. This is her, I believe her first ever novel and one of her most famous ones. But I actually learned about Banana Yoshimoto from this series here. So these are real essays from all these authors, but they have annotations and they have things to help you understand them. So it's very possible that although I'm sure there are many graded reader series that will have 500, 700, 1000 Chinese characters, I may not need that. I may just feel like that was enough practice to now jump into something like this, which helps you to be exposed to real authentic native texts, but some that are simpler and with a bit of handholding to help you understand. Or like in the case of Swedish, I just jumped straight over graded readers, straight into my very first short novel, but that was mostly because I had trouble finding resources in Swedish like these. But anyway, so that's it. I hope this episode just expresses the magic of reading in foreign languages. I hope you feel inspired to go off and maybe consider reading something in the language that you're learning, or if you're not quite at that level yet, I highly suggest just starting to explore what resources are available. I will leave links in the description of this video to all the books I've shown today, just in case any of you want to support me uh, while also getting those books, but feel free to support a local bookshop or explore your own ways to find things. But I really do highly recommend exploring things like graded readers. So I hope you'll join me in this series and I look forward to telling you all about my experience reading my very first pages. I can't believe later today, I'll be diving into a Jane Austen story in Mandarin Chinese. I just, I love it. Okay, everybody have a wonderful Monday, a great new week. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you back here on Wednesday for another video.